Hi, welcome to General Chemistry. My name is Chuck White, and today's lesson is on chemical reaction yields. We're going to talk a little bit about the yields of reactions. We'll talk about reaction stoichiometry, the relationships between numbers of moles of reactants and products, and we'll talk about how to calculate the limiting reactant for a reaction and the percent yield for a reaction. We'll talk about common types of reactions like aqueous reactions and ionic reactions. We'll talk a little bit about acid-base reactions and how to prepare solutions. Now, the mole concept is really important for calculating reaction yields. And as a reminder, we'll start with a simple problem, an example problem, where a company produces magnesium metal from magnesium chloride salt that's recovered from the Great Salt Lake, for example. If the production of magnesium is 100 tons per month, how many pounds of chlorine gas could be released into the atmosphere each year? We'll start by writing the balanced chemical reaction of magnesium chloride being uh, used to produce magnesium metal and chlorine gas. This is the balanced reaction. So as a reminder, we just write at the top, magnesium is 100 tons per month production, and we want to calculate the number of pounds per year of chlorine gas. So we start by calculating the mass of magnesium and converting from tons to grams, so it's 9 times 10 to the 7th grams. We then calculate the moles of magnesium by dividing by the molar mass of magnesium metal, which is 24.31 grams per mole. Now the number of moles of magnesium here is equal to the number of moles of chlorine gas from the balanced chemical reaction on the previous slide. And so we now have the moles of chlorine gas that would be produced per month. Now the mass of chlorine gas can be uh, obtained by multiplying by the molar mass of chlorine gas. Remember it's Cl2, so we have to multiply uh, the molar mass of the elemental chlorine by 2. And then uh, that gives us 2.7. 2.646 times 10 to the 8th grams per month. Now we can convert grams to pounds, and so that's 5.8 times 10 to the 5th pounds. And on an annual basis, we multiply by 12 months per year, and that gives us 7 million pounds of chlorine gas per year. Now, if a reaction is incomplete, or undesired side reactions reduce the product yield, how do we calculate the reaction yield? Well, we use a similar technique, but now we have to have information about both the reactants and the products. So if a student reacts 30 milligrams of benzene with excess nitric acid, but only 35 milligrams of the desired product, trinitrobenzene, is recovered, then what's the yield of the reaction? Well, the number of moles of benzene is the 30 milligrams, or 0.03 grams, divided by the molar mass of benzene, which is 3.8 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of benzene. The moles of trinitrobenzene uh, recovered is the 35 milligrams divided by 213 grams per mole is 1.642 times 10 to the minus 4 moles. And so the reaction yield would be the moles of TNB divided by the moles of benzene times 100%, which would give us 42.8%. So a little less than half of the benzene is actually converted to trinitrobenzene product and all the rest uh, to dinitrobenzene or, or some other undesired product. Another example, if 1.8 grams of lithium reacts with 28 grams of cesium chloride to make cesium metal, what's the limiting reactant? Well, the first thing we have to do is write the balanced reaction. So lithium reacts with cesium chloride to make cesium plus lithium chloride. So there's a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship between the number of moles of lithium and the number of moles of cesium chloride. So now we have to ask a simple question. Which of these reactants is present in the small amount, the smallest amount? Because that will be the limiting reactant. So we convert to moles. 1.8 grams of lithium is 0.2593 moles. 28 grams of cesium chloride is 0.1663 moles. And so cesium chloride is limiting reagent because fewer numbers of moles are available. Even though the number of grams was larger, it's the number of moles that counts. So if the reaction produces 18.2 grams of cesium, what's the reaction yield? 
Well, the number of moles of cesium chloride, the, this limiting reactant, was 0.2593. That's what we calculated before. The number of moles of cesium product is 18.2 grams divided by the molar mass of cesium, uh, which gives us 0.1369 moles of cesium. And so the reaction yield would be that 0.1369 moles divided by the starting number of moles times 100% gives us 52.8% yield uh, for this chemical reaction. Now let's talk about common types of reactions. Uh, we have in aqueous reactions or reactions that occur in water, we have strong electrolytes. Uh, sodium salts like sodium chloride and sodium hydroxide are strong elect electrolytes, so they dissolve as ions in aqueous solution um, almost completely. There's no solid uh, left. They're completely dissolved. Similarly, um, things that contain nitrate ions like um, nitric acid uh, dissolve completely in water. So nitric acid is a very strong acid. There are also weak electrolytes. An example is silver chloride, which dissolves only to a very small extent as silver ions and chloride ions, and most of the silver chloride actually remains undissolved at the bottom of the flask as a, uh, as a solid. HCN uh, is a gas that um, also dissociates uh, only to a small extent as hydronium ions and cyanide, cyanide ions in aqueous solution. Similarly, ammonia uh, produces a relatively small quantity of uh, ammonium ions and hydroxide ions, or a weak base solution in aqueous solution. So what mass of sodium hydroxide is required to make 500 milliliters of 0.44 molar, or moles per liter, NaOH solution? So the way that we figure this out is to figure the number of moles of sodium hydroxide required. That's a half a liter times 0.44 moles per liter is 0.22 moles. And so the mass then is going to be that 0.22 moles times the molar mass of sodium hydroxide, which is 8.8 .8 grams. The procedure would be to take 8.8 .8 grams of sodium hydroxide, weigh it out on a balance, dissolve that in a small amount of water, uh, put it into a 500 milliliter uh, volumetric flask and fill with water to the mark. That way you would have a total volume of half a liter or 500 milliliters uh, and a total number of um, moles of sodium hydroxide of 0 .2, 0 0.22 moles and so that would be a 0.44 moles per liter solution. What volume of this solution, 0.44 moles per liter, uh, would be required to make 750 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution at a tenth molar? Well, um, you'd have a similar pr uh, procedure, but now instead of weighing out a solid, you'd have to weigh out a liquid. The number of moles of sodium hydroxide required is the 750 milliliters, or 0.75 liters, times the desired 0.1 moles per liter, which would be 0.075 moles of sodium hydroxide. It's present in a stock solution, so the volume required would be that number of moles divided by the concentration in moles per liter, which would give us 0.1705 liters, or 170.5 milliliters. Again, the procedure would be to take 175 milliliters of stock solution, transfer it to a volumetric flask, and fill to the mark. Next time, we'll talk about gases. We'll talk about the ideal gas law, the kinetic theory of gases. We'll talk a little bit about some transport properties of gases and properties of real gases. We'll see you then.